What motivates me is making sure that every single student, particularly our students who've been historically underrepresented and underserved in education, have the access to high quality education and the support that they need to be able to get through uh, their degrees and get into whatever it is they want for their future. But what we've oftentimes found is that as the overall success of that campus has went up, the gaps in equity have increased. So if you want to truly improve student success and to truly be student-centered, you start out with looking at where are those areas of disproportionate impact, who are those students? And then the second thing you do is you listen to them. We began this one practice really after the murder of George Floyd. We made phone calls um, through our Black Resource Center to nearly all the Black students on campus asking them, how are you doing? We heard stories of challenge in terms of their personal lives and dealing with uh, employment um, because we were in the height of the pandemic. And just recognizing that there was more that we could be doing as an institution to proactively reach out to the students before it was too late. It really is life-changing. Being a minority on a campus and having someone in this position be so open to listening and so open to hearing our ideas and then going one step farther and saying, let's put your idea into action. Two years ago, our students came and said that they wanted to see more centers on our campus that represented all of our different student demographics. We now have nine different cultural centers on our campus. We have a Black Resource Center, a Center for Intercultural Relations, a Women's Resource Center, a Pride Center. Those are the first four. But then now we also have an undocumented resource center, a Native Student Resource Center, a Latinx Resource Center, an Asian Pacific Islander Desi American Center, and a Center for Transformative Justice that serves our students in providing them with the opportunity to be successful. The Black Resource Center has completely changed my life and helped me come into my identity as a Black woman. There's so much more that we need to do as an institution to ensure that we can help them transition into our colleges, but also into career or graduate school or whatever that next step is for them. Probably the most important project that I've been involved in is in our microsites. What that means is that there's an SDSU footprint where the student goes to the local community college they complete their first two years of coursework, and then they transfer into San Diego State, but they stay at their local community college. And then what we do is we bring resources to them. You have no idea what that means to know that they're prioritizing equity and diversity. By doing so, they're saying that we matter and we have a place on this campus and that we are important and that our voices matter. And I think that by prioritizing diversity and equity, they really are setting a very high precedent that I really hope other universities are able to follow suit with. Approximately 17% of our faculty coming into the institution were underrepresented faculty. And we recognize that as an institution that there was more that we needed to do. So we believe that it's a combination of all these different strategies, implicit bias training, cluster hiring, BIE criteria, inclusion representatives, and pool certification that holistically brings us to where we need to be for faculty diversity.